Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to talk about the COSAC Planner. I hope I'm saying that right. This is a planner that is on Amazon. I'm not sure if you can see the name in there. C-O-S-S-A-C. And this is an undated daily planner. It has monthly layouts also and weekly list sections pages. And it is um, about $25 right now on Amazon. But you know, Amazon prices can go up and down. I really like to do reviews like this for you guys because I feel like there are so many planners on Amazon and it is hard to decipher from just looking at the pictures what might be best for you. And so I love to be able to do um, these reviews for you of the all these planners on Amazon. Okay, this is a planner that only has six months worth in it. Since there is a page per day and you have monthly sections and weekly pages also, which we will get to, this is six months worth. So you would need two books per year if this was your planner. But it is very portable. It's five um it's 5.7 by 8.3, which is A5 size, and it has 272 pages. All right, so let's get into it. COSAC says um, their planner was made to boost productivity, hit your goals, and reach happiness. And I don't know if I already mentioned this. They have 100 GSM paper, and I will show you where I filled out a few days in here so you can see what it looks like also. All right. So if you go to kozakplanner.com, you can get a lot more information and also get a tutorial on there of your planner. They have a little pocket up front here for you, which is actually very functional. And they just have some of their pages stored in there for if you're happy, not happy when receiving your planner. You have your nameplate right here. And then you have an extra band on this planner. Not only do you have the band on the back, you have this band on the front. So that you can, in essence, you know, you could mark the week that you're on because each week has a two-page spread and then you have one page per day spread and we'll get to that. But they not only have a band on the back of the planner, but they have a band on the front. They have a really nice accordion pocket on the back with plenty of room in it. Seems sturdy and can hold a lot in there if you need to. And you also have two nice grow grain ribbon markers. I personally love grow grain ribbon for ribbon markers more than the satin type of ribbon. So I, I like those better. Okay, so that is an extra interesting thing that they have a front band on their planner also. And I'm not sure how well you can see that that's hooked in there since it's all black and it blends in. All right, so then your first thing is your monthly sections. It is undated, as I mentioned, so it's here for you to fill in the dates and the month. So, of course, you can start at any time of year, stop it when you want to, and pick it back up. That's the beauty of an undated planner. You have a tiny little reminders box. You have a little note section. You have a plan for the month and a review of the month. Then you do have a little border at the top here that you could do something with besides writing the name of the month if you needed to utilize that space there on the page. They do have the little triangle in the corner for you to write the date in that is shaded gray. Their paper is a cream color. Their monthly spread is a Sunday start. And let's get just a close up on those days for you guys. Okay, so in your monthly calendars, you don't have any extra for any pre-planning out months ahead. You just have six months. This is a six month planner, like I mentioned, and you just, you have six months of monthly calendar pages. Those are all up front. So here is your six months, just back to back of your monthly spread. Okay. After your six months back to back of your monthly spread, you have a two page dot grid spread that says notes and mind map. So it's really for anything you want to put there. Of course, they do say they have a tutorial on their site of their ideas and how to use their planner. So you can definitely check that out at cosacplanner.com. And I will link that down below in the description box. So after those two dot grid pages, then you have one more notes in my map dot grid on the back. And then you start in your weeklies. So this planner is divided into three sections. You have your monthlies, 
then you have your weeklies, and then you have your dailies. Hence why it's really good that they have two grow grain ribbons and why it's really nice to have this extra band because you could mark your monthlies, whatever month you're on, with your band up front here. And then you could mark whatever week you're on with your first ribbon. And you could mark the day that you're on with your second ribbon. So here is your weekly section. Let's look at this. You have room for your dates for the week. You look at last week in review and you fill that in. This week's priority. And so I notice how it doesn't say priorities. <laughs> and I kind of really like that because it might help my brain to not put so many priorities in a week that are not humanly possible for me to accomplish. If I just listed one big priority for the week, or even three big ones that had to get done, that would be great. Not trying to list too much there. Then you have a section for health. What is going to be your goal for that week for health and for a habit that you're tracking that week? Make it daily, it says. And then a passion project box. What are you working on for yourself that week? A passion project, something you're working towards. Here is a section for all your weekly goals. You have seven, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, weekly goal boxes right there. I like how they're big enough to, you know, write more than just a couple words, um, or you can write your goal really big so they stand out, but this is your two-page weekly spread right here. So this would be where you have to fit your weekly to-dos, your weekly goals, tracking your habits and your health. Then it just repeats itself, okay? So you have weekly spreads to last six months. And this is why I was saying you need page markers. Then you go into your daily spreads. So in between your weekly spreads and your dailies, you do have a couple dot grid pages. Here is the end of your weekly spreads. So you have two more notes and mind map dot grid pages and then one on the back. Then you start your daily spreads. All right. I actually tracked and used this for two days because I thought that, number one, I can talk about it, you know, a lot more personally if I have actually used it, and I can show you guys how it looks really filled out from my life, which is not maybe necessarily the way that they have envisioned using it, but it's the way that my life goes. My life is less about those huge goals right now because it is just, you know, about my kids trying to survive and make homeschool in my house function. So mine is more about to-dos, really, and you guys already know that if you follow me. So, but let's look at a blank page before we go into my daily pages. Let's do that. So you can also see how a whole bunch of Pilot G207 blue ink looks. Once the page has been written on, there is no bleeding. There is some ghosting, but it is not terrible ghosting at all. And 100 GSM is really good paper and it actually feels really good. So you have to decide for yourself if, you know, if that bothers you or not. But um, I don't think it's terrible ghosting at all compared with other types of paper. So, and like I said, 100 GSM is a really good weight. That is what Passion Planner was at last year. Um, until they upped their paper even more this year to 120. 100 GSM is what Panda Planner's at, and it is what numerous other planners are at. I just don't have them all in my mind. So that's a really good norm. It's a good norm. It's not a low bar norm. Okay, so on your daily pages, you can circle what day of the week you're on. You have room to write the date. Aim for today. You have a box for something you are aiming for that day your big goal to get done that day, the task that must get done to that day, or what is your aim for that day. You have a tick box here for your health and for your habit that you're tracking. So whether you did you know, your workout that day, your health, whatever that may be, whether it's a walk or yoga or getting to the gym or going out for a run, whatever you are wanting to do for your um, exercise at this point. And then your habit, which can be something completely different then your health or exercise wise, your habit could be so many, you know, any numerous things, but whatever you're tracking, there's your checkbox. You have five daily priority boxes. And I really appreciate that, that there's not too many 
But as you guys can see, that's, that's always my big problem is I did list my five priorities, but then I make another huge long list. <laughs> so anyway, but that's, the pro that's just, you know, a mom's life. So, okay, so you have five daily priorities, and then tick boxes there. You have a schedule or slash tasks. And I really appreciate how they didn't put the times on here and make this just a timed schedule. Because you guys know I don't really need that section in a daily planner. So I really appreciate the way they divided this. You can definitely use this to write down your appointments for the day and just put the time in there. Or you can use it to just use as a task list. The, sorry, task list. You can use this as a task list for the day and check that off. So I like that function. I like that they left that open to your interpretation and what you need in your life. Then you have a notes idea section. Then you have a review of the day section right here. If you need to email someone or call someone, they have left a teeny little space right there for that. So I like the basic layout of this daily page. I really do. I like how they have a weekly page in there. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the weekly page being so separate from the daily pages, but Nonetheless, I did not fill out a weekly page, but I did fill out two days in this. And you guys can see, I put my weather here for one day. I didn't get to that on the other day. I did check out my exercise box. I didn't even check it off on this day, but I did go to the gym. Um, I wasn't tracking another habit at this time. Um, I just wrote a big thing up here that was happening that day for my son for school, some state testing. I wrote the date in, I circled the day, and then I had my five main priorities for the day, which I really did like them limiting, limiting me to that much and that that section stood out to me. And I could almost be like, I'm not looking at the rest of this until this is done. And then I like that there's more room to scribble notes and a review of the day. I never filled out to review the day. I just scribbled more notes there or left it blank. But I always need more room to just scribble notes that come up through the day, like things I think of to put on tomorrow, um, notes when I'm talking to someone on the phone, just random things I need to remember that come up during the day that need to be transferred to a more permanent place at some point. But I like that there's room in my daily planner for that. And like I said, I like that this is a task list since most days I don't have appointments. And when I do have a timed thing, I can write that in up here up top and then I can just list my tasks. So I really appreciate the setup of this daily page. I personally um, like it a lot. I think it leaves a lot open to make it work for your life. And it doesn't make it too um, restrictive, you know, into what you have to put in every box. So it's it's definitely more open to me to what can work for it in, you know, anyone's life. I like how the lines are not dark, dark, dark black but they're not too light either. They're just, they're the right amount of dark gray for me. And so I really appreciate that too. Okay, so when you go to the end, then you have all your daily pages to last six months. Then you have notes and mind map section at the back. You have probably, you know, 10, 15 pages of dot grid notes and mind map section. Not a huge amount, but not too small. And that is the end. Then you have your accordion pocket. And like I said, your two page markers, which I appreciate the quality of the ribbons. I appreciate that they gave you the two bands since you really need to mark three pages in your book. And I do actually think it's even easier to find your page with the band than with the ribbon because like I have that band on that page and I just open my book and it automatically opens there. So I think that's a pretty ingenious thing to put on there and it functions well. All right, guys, that is the COSAC planner on Amazon. And I will link that down below as well as link you to their site. Thanks for watching today and happy planning until next time. Bye-bye.